Welcome to Fiber Watch. I'm Chimtai Kiri. On today's episode, we are going to look at the term that has commonly been used, and that is the Internet of Things. It is a term that was coined by a British technology expert, Kevin Ashton, in the year 1999, and it refers to as a term which encompasses everything connected to the internet or a vast numbers of things that are connected to the internet so they can share data with other things. In order to understand IoT's benefits, examples, usages, as well as the future, I sat down with the JTL system business analyst, Brian Saar, to tap on his expertise on this matter. I will start with what is closest to most of us. If you look around your home, uh, over the last 10 years, a lot of changes have happened. You'd find that most of our entertainment and maybe uh, music that we consume comes from the internet. You find that TVs are connected to, to the internet, probably your phone. Uh, your music content comes from YouTube. If you are privileged enough maybe to have uh, advanced audio systems, they're also connected to platforms that usually stream music for you. The companies behind the services you consume are actually using information or data that comes out of the devices that people uh, use to consume entertainment to enhance and design products that can suit you as the user. And it is through your habits as you interact with the IoT endpoints. And in this case, it would be your phone or your smart TV or your connected, uh, maybe every receiver or our audio system. It is the kind of gadget you're using. Uh, so. All this information is transmitted backwards to uh, maybe sponsors of content or owners of content and uh, they can use this information to actually design their, their products. With, with IoT, that means you, you're generating a lot of data and data is useful if you know what you can do with it and it depends also on the intent of the person who has access to, to information. So with that comes the risk of information being used for purposes other than what it was intended for. And then there's also the issue of consent, people having access to data without actually seeking consent from the people who own it. Adaptability for IoT in Kenya has really increased over the years. Something has changed from the early 2000s to where we are right now. The level of connectivity has really gone up, especially with, the, with Kenya being connected to the undersea cable has really boosted connectivity within the country. And internet penetration, I think, in, if, you, if you critically look at the statistics of connectivity in Africa, Kenya is at the forefront. So with connectivity comes with increased use of the internet. And with increased use of the internet, that means more and more gadgets, apart from phones and laptops, are connected to the internet. Right now you have uh, apart from wearables, you also have home security systems that are now connected to the internet. You have people who have maybe made advances in agriculture and are using IoT. They have those systems connected to the internet. Now, from the details relayed by Brian Sir, it is clear that IoT matters because it provides businesses and people better insights into and control over objects and environments that remain beyond the reach of the internet. And by doing so, IoT allows individuals to be more connected to the world around them and to do more higher level work. The security component and aspect of IoT is something that you cannot ignore. As a person, and also as an enterprise. As long as humans decide to use the IoT ethically and I use the term emphatically, then we will be good to go. My name is Tim Taikiri and this has been Fiber Watts. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.